Greetings, travelers. In the vapid world of players and classes in Final Fantasy XIV, there exist three main archetypes. Red DPS, Blue DPS, and Green DPS. But White Mage is the greenest of the DPS. A common mistake among people when they first start healing is keeping everybody topped off, which is the wrong way to heal. You simply need to keep everyone alive. If their HP isn't zero, then they aren't dead. Once you start healing like a chad, you will realize that you don't have to cast heals very often. You might wonder what to do with all this free time. You may think that you need to wait for official instructions. Weep my ass. Kill all sons of bitches. That's my official instructions. If your tank complains at the end of an instance that you didn't heal enough, even though they didn't die, simply mutter an insult in real life and then say something nice in-game about thanks for the advice and move on with your life. To unlock the path that rocks, you either start the game as a Conjurer, the only healing class available, or you just unlock the class at the Conjurer Guild. Never would have expected that one. After not forgetting to get your Soul Stone at level 30, this class will hold you back from your full potential in dungeons until level 45. I don't really make these as leveling guides anymore, but up until that point, just use your stupid damage over time ability on enemies and cast stone if you aren't pulling every single mob that was handcrafted and fully animated personally by each developer on the team. Alright, you now finally have Holy, the ultimate environmental saving button. All the trash in the world will be vaporized by your Holy energy as you spew hot, thick, white, light all over your enemies. This stuns all trash for 4 seconds, but will keep stunning them repeatedly for about 7 seconds maximum before they become immune to your stun lock. This usually leaves the tank confused, as they are unsure as to why they were invulnerable for 7 seconds. Such is the life of a true green DPS. Alright, that's basically all you need to know for trash packs. I'm going to explain the boring stuff like how to heal in a minute here, but White Mage does seriously have one of the best AoEs for incinerating generic mobs. And while your tank sets the pace for how many packs you tank at a time, a real White Mage is always overconfident and believes that you can pull wall to wall, no matter the gear, until your entire team wipes. Do not bully your tank, but if they do ask you if they can pull big, just always say yes because you totally won't die. Alright, let's talk about healing, which is the least exciting part of playing a healer, and coincidentally will make up the bulk of this video. Cure 1 is a great ability to remove from your hotbar completely once you get Cure 2. The only reason to keep it around is if you are afraid of being level synced below level 30, or in the extreme edge case where you absolutely need to top off a single player's health bar, and Cure 1 will get you to that threshold and you have no other tool up at that moment, then yeah, you can use Cure 1 in that extremely rare case and save some mana. But for single target GCD healing, just always use Cure 2. You might ask about Free Cure, which is a passive ability left in the game to deceive players to make their healing output garbage. It is not your fault for being fooled, but now that I told you that Free Cure sucks, don't be fooled again. Cure 3 might make you think that there is a pattern, but you would also be wrong. Cure 3 will heal a player that you target and everyone around them in a very small range. This is also an incredibly niche skill, only useful in situations where you need to heal the whole party a good amount and everyone's already clumped together. So something like the beginning of Seed of Sacrifice or Shadowkeeper in Litany Savage can be some decent use cases. Otherwise, you will not be using this ability very often either. And that's everything you need to know about Cure 1 through 3. In conclusion, read what your fucking abilities do. Now White Mage is considered the GCD healer, because there is minimal spell weaving on this class. You might wonder what that means, but basically, you don't have too many cooldowns that are not tied to your global cooldown, and not too many that are instant cast either. This has a few consequences. White Mage is very straightforward to understand, but at the same time, you don't have too many oh shit buttons to instantly heal someone when you are too busy thinking about the blood of your enemies. If you have no instant cast heals up, you're going to have to heal earlier than you might be used to if you play other healing classes. It also means that if you need to weave a spell on occasion, there are not many opportunities to weave spells without interrupting your relentless spellcasting onslaught, also known as GCD clipping. Thus, we first need to remove Fluid Aura from our hotbar as well, because it is just never useful. Except keep Repose, because a random quest at like level 78 will require you to use it, and if you don't have it, you'll have to go and find this stupid ability from the actions and traits menu while in an instance and wonder why they put this in the game. Where was I? Oh yeah. 
To properly time your weaves, you need to know what is an instant cast GCD on White Mage. This includes your damage over time skill, regen, all of your lily skills, which are Aflatus Solus, Aflatus Rapture, and Aflatus Freight Train. This is useful to know in segments where you need to move and you don't want to stop your GCD from spinning, in addition to places to optimally spell weave. The stuff that you can weave in between these are Divine Benison, a size, Thin Air, Tetragrammaton, Asylum, Presence of Mind, Plenary Indulgence, and Temperance. But you also have your standard spellcasting buttons such as Swift Cast, Sure Cast, and Lucid Dreaming. This might seem like a surprising amount of weaving for a class that doesn't have many optimal weaving opportunities, but many of these buttons have a very long cooldown and are not going to be used that often. Here's the better question though. Does any of this actually matter? If I clip my GCDs for these buttons every now and again, is that really a big deal? The answer is no. It's not a huge problem if you don't weave optimally, but if you clip your GCD consistently, you are going to reduce your damage output, which is the wrong way to play White Mage. It is still better to clip your GCD for something like a size whenever it is up, because you will still deal more damage overall. I'm talking about clipping for every single spell weave is going to make your overall damage output way lower. So you could be a loser, consistent GCD clipper, or you can evolve into a healer who refuses to heal people with GCDs and waits until the optimal weaving time and then watches as everyone dies. In all seriousness, if you plan to be a white mage player in high-end content, if you consistently clip your GCD, it is going to make your contribution to the party significantly worse. Even if you don't want to get good now, just remember that practice makes permanent. And trying to time your spell weaving on white mage is pretty much the only optimization that you can really do on this class. Alright, now that I explained your weaving windows, it's time to tell you what everything actually does. But before that, let's hear from today's video sponsor. Just kidding, you think anyone is dumb enough to sponsor this channel? Hello, I'm sponsoring my own video. I am still fresh on YouTube, and I am the still growing cyst on this community. So if you would like to help me out, all you have to do is click the subscribe button, watch all of my content, comment on every single video, like and dislike them, and tune in for every single live stream that I do. But if that's too much for you, the subscribe button is the easiest way to help me out. I won't make any wild promises, but it will tell you sometimes when I upload a new video. I was recently asked why I plan to do a karaoke live stream at 10,000 subscribers, and that's because it is very unusual for the stuff that I typically do and will be incredibly awful, but at least we can all listen to Yakuza music. Thank you for your contribution, and may you survive the zombie onslaught. White Mage has the most complex opener of any class in Final Fantasy XIV. We begin by pre-casting Glare, about two and a half seconds before battle starts, with a battle timer that your party is definitely using. You then cast Dia, and instantly weave both a size and then presence of mind. And now you just mash Glare until you need to heal. Whew, man, that was intense. Alright, I can provide an alternative. If you do want another spell weaving slot in the opener, instead of casting Presence of Mind, you can instead weave Swift Cast to get another glare in that is now Instant Cast, and you have a double weaving window where you're going to weave Presence of Mind after whatever you want a slot in that first weaving slot. But you don't really have to do that. The only thing you have to do is use mobile ley lines and get as many glare casts in as you can. Absolutely crazy. Alright, for dungeon healing, slapping down regen on your tank is your best friend. And if you're feeling real special, Divine Benison is just free healing as long as you don't clip your GCD with it. It's usually easy to use it while your tank piles up all the mobs. If you stack regen with Asylum, depending on your gear and how fast you kill a trash pack, you might not need to cast any other healing. You can now go back to spamming Holy. I cannot stress how much raw healing output these two abilities together will provide in trash packs. It can easily heal close to 10% of your tank's max HP every 2.5 seconds, which is pretty insane. A size is also not a bad skill to weave for extra damage and to get some mana back after casting all those holies. There's not really a good window to use this skill to not clip your GCD. It's one of the only downsides of using your AoE. But don't worry, I'll get to that one in a second. Now, Cure 2 does have a heal potency of 700. You know what else has the same Cure potency? Aflatus Solus. This is a good tool to have because it is instant cast instead of the cast time you have to deal with for Cure 2. But it also feeds your Blood Lily. Your other Lily skill is Aflatus Rapture, which is an instant cast heal for your entire party. This also feeds the Blood Lily. After using three Lily healing skills, you will now have a fully loaded speeding freight train online with Aflatus Misery. 
This has a potency of 900 for the first enemy that you target and deals 25% less to everything else in range. This skill quite literally does a ludicrous amount of damage at once and compares with moves like Samurai's Midare Setsugeka on single target. You might wonder why White Mage gets a skill like this and that's easy. It takes 4 GCDs to use this skill. You cast 3 Lily heal spells and then you cast this damage skill. This is known as a band-aid mechanic to fix White Mage's biggest issue. Many times you have to cast GCD heals where other healers can just weave without losing their damage output. Thus, this skill does the same amount of potency as casting 3 glares. So when you put all 4 buttons together, it's like casting 1 heal skill and 3 damage skills in terms of the damage output instead of 3 healing skills and 1 damage skill. It's such a genius and lazy fix, but is also incredibly fun to use. This might be one of the best band-aid fixes for anything in a video game I have ever seen. The devs can be really proud of themselves for this one. Either way, when going through trash, using a Flayed Solace to heal your tank when you need GCD healing is best because your damage output won't be hurt that badly, it gives you a weaving window, and it allows you to build up your tactical nuke. So once you have a Lily up, which you gain every 30 seconds, it is the best thing to do. When fighting bosses, Lily usage becomes a little bit trickier because you might want to save these skills if you need to move around or if you need to weave. Thankfully, you can hold three lilies at a time, and as long as you don't overcap this or your blood lily, you can plan these cooldowns fairly easily. That's everything I wanted to mention about lily healing. Another skill that has a cure potency of 700 is Tetragrammaton, which is a weavable single target heal on a 60 second cooldown. Great when you need the extra healing mile. Benediction is an off-global cooldown heal that fully heals the target's HP. It does have a 3 minute cooldown, but is the ultimate lazy heal tool in trash packs to let your tank get real low and then miraculously look like you are paying attention the whole time and heal the tank to full. Just don't mess around with gun breakers because they might shoot themselves in the face if they're getting real low and buffer it in a way that they use it right after you use Benediction and make the cooldown useless. Plenary Indulgence is a skill that makes all of your AoE healing potency heal more. Note, this buff does not get consumed when you use an AoE heal. It lasts for its full duration and keeps giving the bonus heal no matter how much you spam team healing. Thin Air is a skill that makes it so that you don't have to pay taxes for 12 seconds, which is useful when you need to spam extremely expensive skills or when your mana is starting to run low. And Temperance is your super healing skill, which reduces damage taken by your party by 10% and makes it so that you heal 20% more as well for 20 seconds. Alright, that's everything about all the heal tools that you can weave. For healing your party through GCDs, I mentioned Cure 3 before, which is incredibly niche. Aflatus Rapture is your Lily skill that heals your party, but Medica 2 though, is the ultimate lazy healing skill, giving massive regen to your entire party and can probably single-handedly carry you through all normal content depending on your gear. This regen also stacks with Regen and Asylum, just for your information. Regular old Medica can be used to heal your entire party if you really need that extra healing GCD and everyone spread apart, but is also generally not very useful. At this point in the video, you might ask this question. Can you seriously just heal through most everything with Regen, Cure 2, Lily skills, and Medica 2? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Only when you start running harder content will using things like Temperance become much more useful and borderline necessary for success. So I told you all the buttons, but be prepared to use like half of the shallow amount of healing skills that you have because Final Fantasy XIV is not a game that requires a ludicrous amount of healing usually. Instead, get ready to cast Glare repeatedly and cast Holy in trash packs to become the beacon of death that you are. I wanted to make a guide to slide casting, but I'm probably going to have to do that again for my Black Mage video. But here's the speedy version. Whenever you cast a spell that has a cast time, in about the last half second, you can move and the spell cast will still go off. This is an exploit of the game's mechanics for lag compensation, and while you can technically slide cast every cast, this does actually clip part of your GCD, despite not appearing that way when you first look at it. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison. However, this extra half second that you get to move can be the difference between getting a little extra greedy with a spell cast, or just dying. It's not super important because you can always interrupt your cast if you absolutely need to survive, but it is something that you can keep in mind. As usual, the things you need to keep track of on this class are Presence of Mind, which comes up every 150 seconds for your speedy casting phase, a size for damage and mana, which comes up every 45 seconds, and your dot, which comes up every 30 seconds. 
Finally, use Lucid Dreaming when you're about to go below 6,500 mana to ensure that you don't bottom out. And using Thin Air for things like Holy Spamming and other costly ability spamming can help save your mana bar. Esuna is a button that removes some debuffs depending on whatever Yoshi P's mood is when approving content. Alright, is Doom going to be cured with Esuna this time? No. Okay. Surecast does in fact prevent most knockback mechanics, and saving Swiftcast for Raids is pretty standard unless you have a lot of confidence in your party and always have Limit Break on your hotbar, because Healer Limit Break 3 is the get out of jail free card when your entire party dies to a mechanic. I have never mentioned Rescue in any of my healing videos, which is an ability to pull other players to you, and that is because using this button will usually result in the other player being extremely angry. So if you want to get flamed, you can use this to get people out of avoidable damage, but it is not your responsibility. Despite all the talk about healing, get ready to spam Holy or Glare for about 90% of your gameplay, and if you use certain illegal programs, you might see yourself shoot up the damage charts to pretty hilarious levels. Overall, White Mage is not super hard to understand and is incredibly easy to be lazy with. There are small optimizations that you can do, but they are not going to make or break your success on this class, because I already know you're going to crutch on Medica 2 like the rest of us after watching this video. However, I did tell you how to properly weave and how to ascend your gameplay. With this, I have completed all of my guides for healing, and I can say it has been pretty mediocre. Now let's get out there and... Kill all sons of bitches, right?